All right, so quick vehicle update. Let's let's try to let's try to do a non ramble tron real quick. So the G still running out of fuel, even with the monster brushless fuel pump. I have done testing prior with the Mustang. It flows lots of fuel and it can't in this car. Why? So we asked a bunch of friends and I said, man, is there a physical limitation with these rails? Am I there because of my content and horsepower? I see people making more. Seemingly they have the stock rails. The feed is what I thought was a 3 8 It has 3 8 clip and it has a 3 8 clip on the hat. It has an, it's a returnless. It has an internal feed into a plastic regulator in the hat that diverts the excess and then it also has a built-in venturi pump that pumps from the saddle tank on this side back into this side so while it's pumping through that it creates a suction and pulls fuel from the saddle tank over all of that seems to be a little bit of a restriction even though loj has made modifications and then when I was talking to LOJ, he goes, you have the stock feed line? I said, yeah, isn't it 3 8 He goes, well, boy, the fittings are 3 8 but the line is 5 16 or smaller in a lot of areas. So that's something incredible to think about, how much power this is making on 5 16 or smaller. So let's get the hand, Richard Holden or hand movements in here. So, uh, sorry, Richard. What I want to do is do a bulkhead, 8 and Monkey Fab has already pledged to give me PTFE fuel line, uh, so I, now I can't buy it because he'll be insulted, and if I buy it from him, he'll cancel my order. Anyway, I would like to do an 8 feed and then do a PQY regulator and then return and then feed the stock rail here because rails for these blowers are like six, 800 bucks. Uh, that's, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do that because people said I should be able to get into the 800 range with the stock rails on E. So I'm only asking for a little bit more. So I'd like to figure out if it's just the feed line and then we can see how far the pump will go. And then I have results on two cars for how far the pump will go. Uh, I would like to wrap up a video where I'm testing the brushless, but this is the second phase of that. So I might just make the video off of the first phase of testing on the Mustang. Yes, I tested a brushless back and forth on the Mustang while I was doing the other stuff with it. So, that moves on to the truck. We got the truck up in the air. We're ready to start putting the manifold in. My buddy's almost done. On top of that, we plugged the entire transmission harness in. We got all that sorted. The other big thing is Holly only approves one pedal in their instructions. This is the pedal they tell you is approved for drive-by-wire, and I think that is cross-platform with Dominator, Terminator, and HP. This is the one for all of their ECUs, so this is what they tell you to use. So, this is like 60-ish, high 60s on Amazon, and what's pretty cool is it even has a little pin and it folds up and goes, when I got the box, I said, there's no way this is a drive-by-wire pedal, and then it uh, unfolded to this thing. Yeah, there's even like a little uh, magazine release there. So, this is what was in my truck, and it has a small connector, and my truck was a 8-wire throttle body, all truck, tack, module, and everything, and this is what you use to plug into the Holly, the larger connector, and I know from experience that some of the trucks have the larger connector. You can see the connector is flipped, the plug does plug into all of them, but what I hear is some people can't use them, some people can. So I investigated a little bit into that, and this is, I stopped at the yard and I got a 09 GMC, which matches the bolt pattern, the truck pedals match. So this is the 06 with the mini connector. I got a 09, this is the 2011. They have a different part number and QR code. So this is the 2011. I did not get to test this one yet. This is the, is that just the part number for the GM performance throttle? And then this is the one that was installed with, has, it has the small connector. And then what I have in the truck and confirmed is working correctly, smoothly, passes the Holly TPS reset algorithm is a 2009 pedal. And that works. 
and it bolts in. In like two seconds, it uses all the same bolts and the Holly connector. So that's done. Uh, I'd like to test the 11. I feel like there's no point uh, right now. Uh, this is all working. I'd like to get the truck running soon. And then we'll move on to this and I'll make sure they both drive good. And I almost want to create like a wiki entry that says uh, pedals not supported by Holly, but we have found to work, use at your own risk kind of deal. The other thing that I want to do on this truck is a friend of mine, Wack Shack Ackerman, sent me, this is like a, please don't kill me on the years, guys. I think it's a 05 to 07 power stroke diesel back pressure sensor. So it comes with the heat pipe to dissipate the heat, the weld-in bung with the entry, the very nice beefy weldable dude here. And then this goes on the other end after this dissipates the heat. And uh, people have already mentioned, and I already understood this, so we'll talk about it anyway for people that don't. If you weld this onto your exhaust and you have the sensor on it and it's off like a flag flapping in the wind with the weight of the car and the weight of the sensor, uh, it's going to break this guy or the hose or the connector or the sensor is going to rattle itself to death. Uh, so you try to support it stock. This is supported up against the cylinder head and then this is in the exhaust manifold, something like that if you look them up. And they take a regular, he gave me this, or I got it, but they, they take the regular five pin, same thing, like power and ground and signal is always the one on its own. So that's going to go on the truck. We're going to look at back pressure. I have back pressure data on the combinations I had talked about before, where they had the billet 8088 turbine. This is the billet 80103. No, this is the 102. So we want to see if there's slightly less back pressure and overall more horsepower capability. That's the big thing with that turbo. This will give us the information we need. If it has the same back pressure and makes a little more horsepower, that's a big thing. The other thing I did for fun is I got Amazon 80 amp relays with these giant wires on them. This is for, I opened the package for more performance with the fan harness kit they sell. The newer fan harness kit. So this is the relays I'm gonna wire to the fan harness kit. All that's gonna get done. I gotta wire the fans, cause this did not have a fan or the pins for the fan, so I added them. I gotta set those up, wire them to those relays and to the nice wiring harness they gave me so I can have nice removable connectivity for my fans. That's on the list. The other thing I got, which I mentioned in mail time, if you just flip through those and they're uninteresting, I do not blame you one bit. I got cam and crank extensions, so this is what I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to create a really nice crimp in here for the signal. And this is going to plug in line and then the output I split is going to go into the stock computer to give the stock computer crank input so it can know the crank is spinning, it can operate the tachometer, and it'll let the AC and fans and everything know that yes, the engine is running or not based off of all the other settings in the computer. A lot of them like to see the engine running when it's running. So that's important. That's what's going to get done. Also, other than that, man, uh, it's small things. It's double checking the wiring, getting the downpipe in, building a downpipe. Uh, once Joey comes over and we bolt this divided log on, the turbo is pretty much on for good. One thing I'm realizing right now that I don't have, which is nice, these videos are nice. Uh, normally the list in my head is pretty good. I'm good at that. I don't have a T6 metal gasket. I think I probably have 30 T4 steel stamp gaskets. Those are my favorite. I don't think I have a T6 one. So I'm going to probably go on Amazon and get a five pack of those things and stash them. So another guy had mentioned that he brought his connectors through the firewall approximately where I did in his transmission. Wires didn't reach. This reached just fine. Had no issues there. Wanted to update him, wanted to update you guys. I don't know if he put the computer farther into his vehicle or what, but it was fine here. Whew, all of that stuff, all of that stuff. Once it gets running, I have, a, there's a 400 or a 450 in the tank. That's from memory. Uh, I don't know exactly which one it is. I'd have to ask, but it doesn't really matter. I have another 450 stashed and my fuel stuff over here in the cabinets. And then on top of that 450, I have the AEM 320 or 340 out of the G. So I would like to put all three pumps, take the bed off once, do all three pumps. And then part of me wants to test and see how far the 
truck will go on the stock feed line because we've taken them pretty far a bunch of times but never pushed until fuel pressure dropped so what that three pumps to me would be plenty of fuel so the issue would be the feed so i still have ye old fuel squid this is what i created for the triple pumps so you could put them all into the colorado i would probably drop this right back into my truck if i had not gotten fan mail minutes ago from a guy said he was developing a triple pump shower head connector straight to 10a and bulkhead all one piece thing the 409 streetcar guy i've been looking him up and i can't find his website or anything so i'm going to keep looking him up he sent me triple pump hangers and some cool stuff and i wanted to look him up and thank him and he said he's going to send me that so i'm going to wait for the fuel pumps the car will run and drive off of one fuel pump it'll even make a decent amount of power off of one for shakedowns next up is just intercooler piping which should be extremely easy on this side we just have to like connect it the pieces i have will make it uh the periwinkle boys will do it and then this one is easy too there's a, one down there we can make the distance all the way to here uh the only thing is like i said i want to test this snake eater throttle but the, the funny thing about having such an awesome throttle body for free to test is this thing's huge it's a 102 and a majority of stuff uh wants to fit the ls2 ls3 style so they're like a four inch so this is like a 425 coupler it's just over four inches so you, people are saying you can stretch the hell out of one of those and get it on but i was not successful so i will try again i tried boiling water and microwave and that stuff and that usually works i'll try heating it up really good with the space heater maybe and seeing if i can hook that thing on there that would be nice and easy uh i better get the up pipe and stuff sorted before then if i smash it on there and can't move it at all that's not going to be helpful so that's got to get taken care of unfortunately these fans and the, the duramax rad and stuff come out so far it it took up more space than i thought it would uh, but much less than the clutch fan and everything else so Whew, that's our quick update for all of this stuff and that's what's going to get worked on next i thought the throttle the pedal thing was pretty cool everything else is working pretty good all the sensors are reading another thing i'd like to do is i believe this has the first version of holly on it there are three versions into terminator now three updates the newest update has if you guys watch holly's videos on youtube imagine that they did a beautiful video recently where they do an entire run through of the Terminator, putting it on a car, going through the wizard and starting the car and what to check for and how to adjust the idle mechanically. Uh, all of this stuff people ask all the time. They did an amazing video. It's like almost 30 minutes and it, everything is packed in there extremely nicely. I even commented, why does your menu system have more things than mine? And then I realized they just released software. So if you have a Terminator from prior to that, you probably don't have the update. So I would like to know what it takes to put the new contents on and the new firmware on. It should be pretty easy. I'd like to test it and then I'd like to show you how to do it. Because if you have an early release of Terminator, you only have one choice for a map sensor and a bunch of injectors and some other stuff is limited. Uh, this latest update has a whole slew of map sensors it looks like you can choose from. I would say very popular is the three bar and they only had the two and a half. So now you can choose a three right out of the gate uh, a lot of that stuff is important and i brought it up and it's amazing to see that they fix and implement that stuff so soon for such a large company to listen to people that's cool uh, it's neat to see all those improvements happening uh, i'd like to go over the new wizard and see how it does that would be great so that's all coming down the pipe uh, i wanted to do everyone's not everyone maybe one or two people asked what's going on with the truck so here we are so you guys are getting, you know, this whole mouthful. So that's what's next. That's what's going to happen. That's what's coming up. Uh, when I make this harness, I want to show you guys how I did it. Uh, do you guys want to see in detail me like just opening this and crimping on an excess wire that comes out? Uh, I will say that you, you should get... Uh, this is one of those things that you should not do sloppy mechanics. Like I don't want to cut the holly harness and do a, a crappy job soldering or using a insulated poor crimp connector from a parts store. Uh, I would recommend that you guys invest in something like these. These really nice 
uh, non-insulated boys. I have them in a lot of sizes. I try a bunch of different brands on Amazon all the time. They all seem pretty similar quality. And then I've been buying these grab bags of double-sided glue pre-cut heat shrink. This stuff is fantastic when used with the appropriate crimp. And by crimper, uh, I don't mean the one that folds in half when you use it from AutoZone. I mean, this guy is nice for larger connectors, something like this. Uh, if you have used something, I don't even think I have garbage ones anymore. Uh, what you would get is, this is a stripper, but garbage parts store one would be similar or worse than this bottom piece here. Who you know, All it's gonna do is fall apart. Uh, I've learned my lesson with that, I hate it. Uh, these are incredible for crimping things. And then these guys are totally top notch. There's a lot of stuff you can buy from like Blue Point tools and everything else. Who makes this one? It doesn't say on it. There are many like this. I bought these off Amazon. After tons of research trying to find exactly this, I think I honestly had to ask on Sloppy Mechanics where to get and find these. But it has the... Sorry, let's just put it on the floor. I can't stand the... So, it's got cutters way up in here. It's got strippers down in here. And it has uh, grabby boys, like the teeth at the very end, which makes a lot of sense when you are adjusting, moving, doing something else. And then this is the non-insulated crimper with the big tooth in it that smashes the small barrel connectors that I have. And this is for doing insulated. So all of this stuff uh, works together. They feel great in your hands. I've been using them for a long time. They will crimp the hell out of something and just continue to do it. They don't seem to be wearing out. Uh, they will crush a larger barrel fitting than you can think, no problem. And uh, everything about them is very high quality. I use them a lot. No problem with that. I don't know who makes these. There's a lot of companies, obviously, with a lot of things that make those and sell them for way more with their brand name on them. So I'm going to show how I'm going to do that. It's very important. I can't stress this. If you cut your crank signal and you do a crappy job, everything's going to suffer. Uh, your tuning, how the car runs, you might hurt it. It might not work. Uh, try to do a good job on this. That's why I'm going to stress that. There's a lot of stuff you can get away with. Uh, that's important, so that's why I don't even want to cut the holly harness. I want to do an extension in case I ever want to remove it, in case I'm having problems, etc. So, that stuff, that stuff, this stuff, this stuff uh, is all happening at the same time. Uh, also, when I took this down to the dyno, you can probably hear it on the videos, it has an exhaust leak. It blew out the flex, so it has uh, two flex sections on there, and it blew the one completely out, and it's pouring into the car, and we talked about it on the mail time video. So the whole exhaust has got to get dropped out of this boy. The two flexes have got to get replaced. At the same time, I might, I'm might i trying to get the fuel line so I can get that replaced, but then I'm researching the whole... There's a jet pump and a Venturi with the saddle tank, what I just went over. That's a lot of research for me, and if I don't want to research it, it's like 800 some dollars for a hat that does it all for you, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm more keen to just get this going. This has already been running and really hasn't had any issues other than me messing with it. So, that's the two-car update and the future alignment of videos for the short run.